this week's impact. Before I get started, I want to say this. Before I heard that Billy Corgan would be now the one who's generally running TNA and Dixie Carter is going to be doing international work. In other words, she's going to be dealing with any type of situation that's internationally for TNA. I thought, how is that going to work? Will it actually function? Because there's a lot of people in TNA that really care about what Dixie cares about. Would they listen to Billy and actually remold the show in his, in his vision? And when I see this impact, I think they might be willing to actually listen. Because this isn't like a regular impact that we've... I'm not saying the impacts for the last couple of months have been bad. But you can see the progression of things have begun to really change here. I'm not saying a great change, but it's a change. So if Billy has been kind of spearheading most of that change... I'm all for this. So let's talk about the beginning of the show with James Storm and what happened at the very beginning. Well, not the very beginnings, but at the very end of TNA last week where he kicked the head off of Lashley, tried to get the pin right when the bell rang, and when it did, well, Bill, well, what is it? Brian was not in position. So he had a legitimate gripe going into this impact. And then Billy comes out as the new president and says simply, you're acting like a bitch. You lost. Deal with it. Ref's decision's final. And what did James Storm do? James Storm had a gripe, which a lot of people agreed with. Gets a hammer, started hammering everything. And eventually when security was called in, he cracked a beer bottle on one of the guys. Now he's suspended indefinitely. For unknown time. Now, there could be two reasons for that. One, they're doing this for storyline. Two, there's something going on with um, James Storm. They really need to give him time off, either because he did something wrong, or there's something's happening with him. Which, when he comes back, who knows, I, I really hope he doesn't do the evolution again. That's what I don't want. But if he comes back in a different type of attitude, I'm okay with it. The thing that I liked the most about what happened was after it was over, and they were escorting him to his car, that he's talking to the guys who are security. Then he talks about the guy who's the cameraman named George. That part, WWE does not get that I feel like they're so not getting. The people who work in the back, they rarely ever talk about them. It's like the people who work in the back are not only invisible, they're stupid. They don't even need to be there. But in this case, in TNA, the wrestlers know these guys. And I would have liked to see this in WWE periodically. We don't get that in WWE. Very rarely. Maybe when you see them going to the ring once. But in some part of a really dramatic situation, you rarely see it at all. Almost zero. Maybe once every couple of years you see it. In this case, I enjoyed it. And I hope they do this more often where they kind of let the guys' names be mentioned. Because the wrestlers legitimately know these guys for years. I actually enjoyed that. Moose versus Eddie Edwards. Now, I didn't expect Eddie to win here. And seeing that Moose, and I believe I did see Full Killer 99's feelings about last week, that Moose may turn face. I really hope he doesn't turn face because I'd rather stay him as a heel for now because if he does turn face, what was the point of doing it? I do agree with him. Moose destroys Eddie Edwards. I'm fine with that. The match I did not like at all. Even though I understand what they did at the end to protect Jade was Jade versus Gail Kim. Mind you, the match was good. Jade showed how good she is, especially when Gail does a dive outside the ring. And Jade grabs her, even though she had to use the guardrail to hold herself up at first. She didn't let her ass go. She dropped her ass and hurt her knee. And I'm talking about Gail Kim hurting her knee a little bit when she got the knees to the gut. I was fine with that. But I knew what was going to happen, that Jade was not going to win here. And look what happened. If they truly wanted Gail Kim to lose, why didn't they have Sienna attack Jade and Gail would lose automatically? No, Gail still wins, so it gives her a reason to continue on her journey. I just didn't understand why they did it with Sienna. Really, it, it wasn't necessary. If they only cared about getting Gail out to give her a reason to continue, they could have done it with Jade getting attacked, and Jade would still look good. This... Jade looks like she was an afterthought. 
And I didn't like that. And Jade still looks gorgeous. Oh my goodness. This beautiful black Korean woman is gorgeous. I can't stop saying it. If she saw this in real life, I'd say, don't hate me for, because I think you're beautiful. But you're beautiful. Okay? I know you're probably taller than me. I'm only 5'8 and a half or 5'8. Uh, I love you. <laughs> but you get my point. And let's move on, ladies and gentlemen, to the... Um, I'm going to do the ladder match now because there's no real reason to drag it out. We already know what happened. Jeff Hardy won it. Matt Hardy got the contract. And now they're going after Decay. Now, I know a lot of people are not happy about this. I'm only seeing this from a perspective of different form of writing long term. Look, let's be honest. They're not going to drag this out forever. They're not going to do it for another two or three years. This isn't going to happen that long. This is what I believe. They may drag this to the end of the year. What's going on with Jeff and Matt? I do believe that. I don't believe they're going to drag it in 2017. It will make no sense to drag it that long. Because if Billy understands how bad Aces and Eights worked, he'll understand not to drag this into the next year between Matt and Jeff. People will turn on them and hate them both. At this moment in time, a lot of people are enjoying what's going on with Matt, but they're now cheering for Jeff, saying, obsolete! They are. So Jeff has gotten over his part of the plan. The people like this part of the plan. They may not 100% like Matt, but as I've said over and over again, Matt may not be the best wrestler, the best actor, or the best ring general, but he's good enough that it would work. And with different writing, even if it is from him or his brother, it has gotten over to a certain extent. Maybe not 100%, but i say at least 60 or 70%, this, the storyline has gotten over. Yeah, I'm sure it's not going to be over with all the hardcore fans because they really don't like Matt. But a lot of them do like Jeff. And as much as they don't like the story, it is a different type of story that you don't see in WWE. So that's the reason why we're getting something. And I commend them for going this far with it. But like I said earlier, if they drag this beyond 2017, I'm writing it off. As much as I'm okay with it now, and I'm actually enjoying it to a certain extent, still... I don't give a damn. Now, let's see. Um, hmm, which one should I start first? Eli Drake. He had his time with Lashley. Let me talk to you, Babo. I want my title back. I made that King of the Mountain title interesting because I was Eli Drake, dummy. I'll say this for the segment before his match with Shira and after it was over. Eli looked good. Shira sounded like he had not spoken English for several months. He had been away, maybe to Bangladesh. He'd forgotten how to speak English for a little bit, so he really sounded bad. Now, unless he was acting, then that's something entirely different. But to be honest, he actually sounded like he'd forgotten a little bit of English. I'm hoping that's just an act. Because that's not good for someone that is working in America, goes home for a little while, and then forgets how to speak the language you're working in. That's just how I feel about it. But he got blunt force trauma and it's over. But the question is going to be, how are they going to do something with Eli Drake? The next thing is the fatal four-way for the X Division. Now, I enjoyed how Zima Ion talk, DJ Z. I've said this before, out of anyone in the X Division, DJZ, as you've seen in my opening, DJZ is the most well-built X Division guy. That's what I knew. That's how I felt. And they let him win again. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, why didn't they do something with Mandrews? Why didn't they do something with Rockstar Spud? Hell, why didn't they do something with Sutter? Well, as much as you want to say it, X Division is mostly on explosion and we don't see it on TNA's website and we don't see it on TNA's YouTube channel look at Andre if you see see this video Andre Corbell he he is one of the people I truly respect if you see this and you've already sent an email to Dixie before if you send another email please tell her to have X Division 
when it's on Explosion, be released on YouTube instead of the small segments. They literally put it on the front page this week on Explosion. Let people see Explosion on YouTube because they can't always get it on Pop or the Fight Network. The United States is hard to get it. I have to stream it or I have to wait until a few days later so I can actually get the video on one of the sites that people know they can watch the video completely. This is the only way anyone's going to know what's going on in Explosion because Sutter went and knocked Rockstar Spud's teeth out almost and now he has to wear braces. How the hell do we know that unless we see Explosion? X Division for Explosion. Put it on the YouTube main page every week you put on your show so people can see it because not everyone can. Europe can probably see it easily. But the United States, we don't can't we can't always get it unless you get the fight network. Anyway, the next thing, EC3. Let me do this right. EC3, Drew Galloway, and the Aaron Rex, the Rex Solution. I can't. That sounds stupid. <laughs> the Rex Evolution. No, that sounds stupid too. Jess Rex. That sounds even worse. Okay, we already know what happened. Aaron said simply, I loved your work. I know you guys. I really respect you guys. I want this to be a fair fight. I become the guest referee. No more said. Does this mean he's going to interfere in the matches? I don't think so. He currently is a face right now, so I don't believe he's going to turn heel, and I don't believe he's going to screw either guy. At this match, that's probably going to happen next week, will be a very important one for him, as well as for both of them. Who is going to get that Bound for Glory match? Is it going to be EC3 or Drew? What do you think Aaron Rex is going to do? Is he going to call it down the middle? Or is he going to fuck either one of them or both of them? We don't know. I want to see it. I'm actually very excited. Let's see. Um, what am I forgetting here? Am I forgetting anything? The only thing left to talk about is what happened with Bobby Lashley. Billy Corbin, I always say Baron, Billy Corbin and Dixie. I've said this before and I said it again. I felt that them talking about this, they were going to unify the titles. And what did Lassie talk about? He wanted to unify all the titles under one name. That was going to piss my ass off. I did not want to see all three of these titles go away. Even though the King of the Mountain title is crap, it could still be turned into something important. But you know what? He did talk the truth. He said with the King of the Mountain title, what the fuck is this thing? It's garbage. Threw it to the ground and Dixie didn't like it. He looked at X-Vision. I ripped out the heart of the X-Vision, but guess what? Tina already did that a while ago because you don't see many matches or any feuds or any storylines. Threw it to the ground too. He said the only match that matters is the world title match. The only thing that matters is his title and the only thing that matters is me. I enjoyed that segment very much. And now this also shows Billy's assertiveness as now the president of TNA. Does this mean that he's going to make the show better? Particularly what's going to happen next week where he's going to have to force Lashley to defend his title. This is my feeling about Billy Corbin. I feel that with Billy, it's going to depend, as I said in the beginning of this video, will the staff really be behind him or not because they usually will always stick with Dixie no matter what because they know they can get away with what they want with Dixie because a lot of times Dixie goes where the wind blows her that's the way Dixie goes you said well let's act like WWE well let's act like RH oh let's act like New Japan Pro Wrestling oh look at what's going on with Lucha Underground let's act like them oh wait a minute let's switch back to WWE again if Billy has a good focus and a good direction and if the writing staff will listen to him along with the wrestlers we could get a new product but the question is going to be will people listen to Billy Corbin and is Billy that good that's going to be a question but that's my point of view you guys tell me below I hope you enjoyed the same view please give me a comment below I'm sorry this is late I kinda had something I had to do yesterday unfortunately I'm trying to make sure I get TNA out within two days. I hope you don't mind. Tell me how you feel about it. And have a good day. Have a good night.